Hey y'all, it's Trish. As you all know, Kay is the paper specialist in our partnership and she has put out some awesome videos on paper projects. We decided to take some of the ones that we thought would work best for Christmas and put them together in a compilation. Now, I knew that I had to contribute something to this video and even though I'm not really a paper person, I thought I would show you guys the one thing that I do know how to do with paper and that's how to make gift bags. I'm going to be using this check paper that I got from Hobby Lobby and this flowered paper that I got from the Dollar Tree. I like both of these paper. The one from Hobby Lobby is a lot better quality, but you can use any paper to do this. You could even use copy paper or newspaper would work for this, but these are the two I'm using for today's project. You'll also need some stick glue, some ribbon of your choice, and a few tools from the work caddy. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of my paper. We're going to start off with this paper from Hobby Lobby and figure out how tall I want my bag to be. For this one, I'm cutting it about 17 inches. And I really like this wrapping paper because it gives you cutting lines so you know exactly where you need to cut. Once I get that done, I fold over about two inches on the top and this is going to be the top of our bag. I like for it to be finished. You don't have to do two inches, you can do as much as you would like. Then I take my bone folder and I burnish it down, but I wanted to show you that if you don't have a bone folder, you could use a spatula, a credit card, whatever you would like. Now I take and I find the center of my piece and do just a little bit of a fold there. And then I take one side and fold it over to that mark and burnish it down. Now for the other side, we're gonna fold just past that because you want to give yourself room to put your glue. When we open it up, we're gonna take our glue stick and put some glue there on the edge. And then I like to put some under the lip there to hold that top down in place and then you just glue it together to make the bottom of our bag you're going to fold up however wide you want your bag to be i like to fold mine in four inches because i think that gives you a good size bag for putting gifts in once you burnish that down now we're going to open it up so you just kind of open it up and make sure that you have it even. On this one side, you see that I did not. And one way that you can tell is if your fold mark lines up with the crease in the bottom. That will make it even every time. And now we're going to fold the bottom up just past the center mark. And then we're going to fold the top down. And you want to make sure that your corners are even before you burnish this down too good. You see, I took my ruler there and I made sure that they were even and then you use some glue to put it together now I did mess up on this one I did not put the glue on the sides and I should have but I, you'll see that in the next one so now for our, the sides of our bag you're just going to fold those sides over this is about two inches but you can see there on that corner of that bottom as long as you are lining that up then that's going to be right now you just open up your bag and you form it out. On one side of each side, your fold's going to be right, but the other side, you're going to have to fold it in the opposite direction and your crease is going to help you with that. You're also going to have to fold the center of that side in the opposite direction. And again, your crease is going to show you where that needs to be. And this is just forming out this bag. Now we open it up and I like to make the bottom of my bag sturdy. So I like to put cardboard in there. Now you can use any cardboard you have on hand. I thought I had some poster board, I did not. You could even use a cereal box, whatever you have. I had this project board that I've been using for other things. So I just trace the bottom of my bag on it and then I use my Zacto knife to cut it out and you put it down in the bottom of your bag. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure in one inch on each side. And this is where I'm going to make the holes for the handles of my bag. 
after I got my marks on there, I took my pokey tool and just stick it through. Now, silly me, I did not think to pull out my side. So on that one side, I poked it through all four pieces. But you see that I pull it out and then I make my holes just a little bit bigger so that I can get my ribbon through there. You can use any ribbon that you would like to. I like to use the softer ribbons for this and I just measured out how long I thought I wanted my handle to be. This is really just eyeballing it. And then you twist up those ends and poke it through your hole. Now I did have a little bit of trouble with some of this ribbon getting it to go through there because that hole's not too big and I didn't want to tear it any bigger. So I just kept twisting my ribbon to get it through. Now you can tie these on each end if you would like to you can do a double knot like that but I didn't want to have to worry about it pulling back through so I just tied it in the center you do the other side and now you got a bag now we're going to do our other bag this one is going to be finished off just a little bit differently but we will start off the same way I measure off how tall I want my bag to be and I cut my paper now guys I will tell you that this paper was not the greatest. It is very thin and it made it hard to work with without tearing it. But I love how it looks. I was showing you there that on one side it has this factory mark on it and I wanted to make sure that I folded it down first because I want to hide that factory mark under the other side. So I folded it to the center and then on the other side I fold it just past the center so that I have room to glue it and I burnish it down. Now I'm gonna use my glue stick and put glue down and then fold it over and press. For the bottom, again, I measured up four inches. You make it as deep as you would like it to be. And then I burnish that down. I open up my paper and I make sure that those crease lines are lined up. If you line those up, then you know that the sides are going to be straight. And I burnish it down. Now I will say that this thin paper is great for burnishing. It burnishes down so well, you don't have to worry about that. Now here you're gonna see that I actually used my glue on those sides, like I was telling you on the other one that I should have done. Now I'm making sure that my sides line up And then I use my glue stick on those sides and on the top and then press it down. For the sides of our bag, I'm going to fold in. Again, it's about a two inch fold, but I just make sure that it lines up with that corner down there at the bottom of the bag. And now I do the same thing on that side. And now we're going to form out our bag. Now this is where this thin paper starts getting tricky to work with because I actually ended up tearing this. I don't think you can see it on camera, but I did get a little tear in it. So I really wouldn't be able to use this bag. Um, this is such pretty paper and there's other things I can use it for. I just don't think I would use it again for a gift bag. So we're gonna form those sides by refolding, making sure everything lays down and that it's burnished down flat. Then do the same thing to the other side. One side always has a side that is folded right and a side that is folded the wrong way. So just use your crease to fold it the right way and then those insides always have to be folded back down as well. Now I'm going to trace my bag onto my cardboard and cut that out with my Zacto knife. Again, I'm sorry I was off camera. I'm just trying desperately not to cut my paper. We'll put that in our bag and that, that sturdies up that bottom. Now, for this one, we are going to fold this top. It's gonna to be an accordion fold. I fold down about a half an inch. I just kind of eyeball it. And then you go back and forth, flip it over, fold one way, flip it over, fold the other way until you get it down to about the height that you want your bag to be. Now see, when you pull that up, it gives you such a pretty finish on that top. I thought I was going to use this ribbon for this. I liked how it looked with it, but with this paper being so thin and this ribbon was really stiff, 
it just did not work. I could not make it come together. So I finally gave up and took it off and I went and found some soft ribbon that I could use. And then I got a clue and thought, you know what, if I was doing this in real life, I would have a gift in there. So I put something in there to act as my gift. And now I can actually tie this up the way that it's supposed to be. So you just pull it up, tie a bow, and then pull your bow around to the front of your bag. Oops, it fell, sorry. I didn't tie my bow very tight. And then just fluff up your top, trim your ribbon, and there's your gift. I think these are so pretty. Since that paper was so thin, I thought that I would show you this bag one more time out of some thicker paper, how it really looks when you put it together. I had this craft paper on hand. I love this craft paper. I use it for so many things and it's a good thickness. I thought it would work well for this bag. And gifts can be really cute whenever you wrap them in this kind of paper. So I cut my paper, I found my center, I did my folds. One side goes to the middle mark, the other side goes just past that. Put your glue on both sides and glue it down. Now I'm gonna fold up four inches on the bottom. I am going faster on this one. It's the exact same steps as the other one, but I wanted to show you how it turns out with this thicker um, material. We're gonna fold up that one end, put our glue on the sides, and then fold the other side over, making sure I've got it even, and then put glue on the sides and the top. Now we're gonna do those sides of the bag by folding it over, making sure that we meet that corner down there. And now just form out our bag. And this works so much better with this thicker paper. Get those sides turned the right way. Now I'm going to trace my bottom, cut it out with my Zacto knife, and this time I'm actually gonna put this one in with the brown side up. Since my bag's brown, I thought that would work better. And now we're just gonna start our folding. It's an accordion fold back and forth. I always do mine eight to 10 times. That's a good record. It, it gives you a really nice top. I'm going to be using this burlap ribbon that Kay calls my signature ribbon. Y'all know I love this stuff to tie this one up with. I did leave the wire in it. You could take it out. I put a gift in here already. I know you didn't see me do that, but I actually did. And then I just tie a bow. I duck tail my ends and fluff the top. And there's our gift bags. I really love how these turn out. I do buy gift bags from the Dollar Tree, but when I want something special, I like to make one of my own. Now stick around and see what Kay has in store for you. In this video, we are spotlighting our best paper projects to use for Christmas that have been featured in our videos, plus a bonus project. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are new here, we would love it if you will hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. Hi guys, it's time for another Tutorial Tuesday and guess what? We're starting our Christmas in July projects. I'm going to start off with this planner for Christmas to plan out your month, your shopping, everything to do with Christmas, your meals and so forth. I have elastic closure, little charm on the front, little cut apart on the front. That would be a good page marker. Love this. I have a little clip here. It's on a little small clothespin that I got at Hobby Lobby. This little girl is vinyl and it also came from Hobby Lobby in the stickers. It was really cute. They come in a pack of six or I believe they do. Love these. And then the book is laminated. We'll go over that in a bit. It used the full 12 inch, inch width of the paper. Inside, we have a little pocket and some cut aparts. Have a pocket folder with receipts. Got a December checklist. I believe we have a monthly calendar coming up. Yes, we do. So you can do the month at a glance. Some shopping lists. 
all kinds of things are in this book that we're going to make. This is also a weekly calendar, so you can put in the four month, four weeks, excuse me, leading up to Christmas. And then Christmas decoration planning and ideas, so you can plan out your shopping or plan out how you're going to decorate your house. Christmas parties and events. Christmas menu and recipes. Each notebook is not real thick, and you can add to it, though, as you go. It's left so that you can add more pages in. Our Christmas traditions. This one, you can add photographs and words describing all your Christmas traditions. Have a matching pen. I added paper in here. Nice elastic to match. We have a little pad in the back so you can make notes and rip out the pages as you plan. I did a little jumbo paper clip. That poinsettia came from Hobby Lobby, of course. And a myriad of things you can do with it. Got a cute tassel charm, a little bell. So we'll put this together together. I just thought you would like to see some of the things I did. This is the large paper clip and has a little Santa on there. But there are a lot of things you can do to dress up your planner. I sold these last year at my craft show, and they were a bestseller. I only made about six at a time that I took with me. They sell better mostly in November, so people have a lot of time to plan for Christmas. So let's get started, y'all. So when you look at the paper pad, the first thing you want to do is kind of take everything out, and you want to break it apart. And I like to decide on my cover and my folder first, and then I decide on what I'm going to cover my notebooks with. The first thing I decided on, I went through this pad and I deconstructed it and looked at the back and the front, and there are many beautiful pages in here, and I should be able to get at least two of those planners out of this one pack of paper. So I think the first one I'm going to choose is this poinsettias for the front. I just love poinsettias. To me, they scream Christmas, and I think it is beautiful paper. When I laminate it, it will be shiny and durable, and it will just make a beautiful addition to the front of our book. So I think that's going to be my front. This is some of the cut-aparts that came with this collection. We'll put some of those in some pockets. We'll use them to decorate. Got a few things in mind. And then for our folder, I think the first folder I'm going to make, I'm going to use this paper. It's the holly leaves and berries, and you can't get more Christmas than that, right? So I think that will be our folder. And of course, that will be on the inside, and everything will be folded up. For our notebooks, I really love this paper. On the back, it has some cut-aparts, but sometimes you have to use it also. There's some more cut-aparts. I love, love, love this paper. This is very similar to the one I showed you on this notebook because this is also Echo Park paper, but a different collection. So that might be one of our notebooks. And I also love this red. This also comes across really pretty. That will probably be a notebook. And this one as well. So we'll just see as we go along. We'll see how this book comes together. And we will make the cover for our planner first. We'll need the entire width and then we'll cut the height at seven and a quarter inches. Now we'll score our paper on the 12 inch side using our scoreboard at five and three eighths, six and six and five eighths. And now we'll fold on the first and the last score line, leaving the middle score line. And now we'll round the corners. Now let's make our pocket folder. We will cut the width at 10 and a half inches and our height at 10 inches. Place it in our scoreboard and we'll score it on the 10 inch side at five and a quarter. That is exactly half and then we'll turn it and score it at seven inches. Fold on the score lines and then burnish and then we'll cut it at a slight angle to make our pocket. And now we'll round those corners, being sure everything is nice and straight. Let's round all of the corners, and then come back and do those inside corners as well. And then we have a cute pocket. 
Using our art glitter glue, we'll close the sides of our flaps. It only takes a thin bead of glue because our glitter glue is wonderful. Have you ever used art glitter glue? I use the five mil laminating pouches to laminate my covers. This brand is sold at Staples. I will use two pouches of lamination for the cover and I will cut each one at six and a half inches and overlap them at the center, sending it through the laminator with just one the first time. I selected our compliment card. I'm going to use this red card that says Joy and I want to laminate it while I have my laminator out. I'm just going to use one of my scrap pieces that I cut off to make my cover. I'm using my laminator that I got at Staples and I'm just running it through for the first time using just the one piece of lamination because I want it to adhere well before I put on the second piece. And now I'm placing the second piece across and they overlap in the middle and will give a great spine. We, this book will be very durable. And now I'm running through my compliment card. And finally, running that cover through for the third time. You want to make it sure that it's stuck down really well. And now I want to trim off those edges. I will just use my paper trimmer. I want to leave about an eighth of an inch all the way around. You want to make very sure you don't get into the air pocket because if you do, the lamination could peel up. It doesn't always, but it can. And now using my scissors, I will round all the corners off. And I even cut a little bit more off because I thought my cutter just didn't do the pro proper job it should have done. And now I'm folding on that first and third line. And now let's start punching those holes in using a 1 8 inch hole punch. I punch one hole on each of my score lines and then as well I place one in between each set of holes that I've punched. So that gives me a total of five punched holes on each end. One on each score line and then the other two are centered in between the sets of holes. And then I also need a hole in the center of my book to place my elastic that will be the closure for my book. I'm going to use my big bite and line it up from top to bottom, placing it on that middle score line. And there you have it. Now let's get ready to string some elastic. I cut 56 inches of the red elastic to string into the planner. Burning the edges helps in threading it through our journal, but it will still need to be cut when it starts to unravel. I first push the elastic through the middle hole at the top. I pull it all the way through and leave a tail that is past that center hole. And then I turn it on the back and go to the side and pull my elastic through again. And then when I turn it to the inside, I go straight down to the hole that corresponds below the one I was just in. If you notice, when I string these holes, I'm going to the side in the back and then always vertical on the inside. So horizontal on the outside, vertical on the inside. I'm going straight across from the hole I just came out of. Once again, pulling it taut, but not too tight. And then I'll go to the side again. I have to pull my other elastic to the side a little bit to give me plenty of room to get it through, but it will fit. You turn it and straight across once again at that third middle hole. Flip it to the back, moving to the side, pulling it nicely. And then when I turn to the front again, I'm going straight up. I'm going to pull my elastic tail that I have to the side so that I can get it easily through the hole. Turn it to the back, thread it through the side, and again, straight down when I get to my inside. 
one more time across to that last hole there, which would be my fifth hole, and straight up at the top once again. Now we'll go sideways or horizontal, pulling my threads aside so that it fits easily through the hole. And I'll go straight down on that hole four. It gets a little unraveled after you've done this several times. And then finally, across in the back, you can see there's a skip place. Pull it up, and then I take my two tails and I tie them together using two or three knots. And that's how my elastic is strung into my book. This gives me eight pieces of elastic that I can put various books into. And I'll just cut off the excess and again burn those edges. And now for the middle hole. I'm going to cut my piece after I wrapped it around my book to get a good size, burn those edges. And at first I'll tie a knot and I'll try to thread through the folded piece through the hole in the middle. And usually that works. But this time I was not successful. So you'll see me untie that knot and push it through from the front, one piece of elastic at a time. Sometimes you just have to do it the hard way. So we'll pull it through and again tie a knot. Sometimes it just takes a little work. And there we go. We have a pretty good hold. So I adjusted it one more knot. I love how this is turning out. Let's put in our folder. Not too bad. I can't wait to finish this book with you guys. I hope you'll follow along. Next Tuesday, I'll come back and we'll work on it some more. Here's our compliment card. I'm going to trim that up and get that right on the front. This book will be sure to keep you organized for all those Christmas parties and get togethers and traditions. You can make notes and place pictures inside, and next year you'll have a head start. I love how this turned out. Today we're going to be working on part two of our Christmas journal slash planner. I'm going to be putting in a monthly calendar, some shopping list. We'll need a few tabs to go on our books like Christmas menus and our Christmas traditions, Christmas decorations, planning and ideas. We'll also need our weekly calendars. I'm going to put four in our, our book and I'm showing you that I didn't print them on the back because I'm going to leave space to make notes. And then I'm just trimming up our pages. You want them to be a little under seven inches tall and between 10 and 10 and a half inches wide, no more than that. I did mine at about 10 inches. So I just trimmed them up and folded them in half and that's how they're going to go in our book. A really simple process. These are just some pages that I created myself and I bought the monthly calendar and the weekly calendars on Etsy. Cutting takes a little time, 
and it's a little persnickety. You can see I'm cutting just outside the lines because I want mine to go in my planner a certain way. It's just personal preference. And you could score it on a scoreboard, but I chose just to fold it in half. And there's our shopping list. When I ran it off, it didn't line up exactly like it had in the past because I have a new program on my computer. A new, I don't have Word any longer. And so I just sort of made it work this time. I'm going to have to play around with that. And there's our book where we put in our folder before. And now I'm putting in the monthly calendar and another elastic putting in the shopping list and now I'm going to work on the weekly calendars. I'm going to round off those edges and just to let you know you have to fold one in and one out on those pages so that it will line up a month at a time or excuse me a week at a time. Here I'm cutting the cover for our weekly calendar. I'm cutting it right at seven inches tall and ten and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to round the corners, give it that finished look, and then I'll place my calendars inside. I'm going to staple mine with my long arm staple. You don't really have to do that. I just like to keep that book together. Then I'm going to get my label to go on that one. It says a week at a glance. These are just some labels I made on my computer. I keep them stored in there and I print them each time I'm going to use them. I cut them out with just a margin on each side. I just kind of eyeball it. I don't really measure. And then I'll mount it on some colored paper, some of my scraps from my collection, and cut it out again. This just gives it a nice finished look for our booklet. And this time I decided I would mount it a second time and give it even more color and depth and dimension. And now I'm just using my glue and place it on the front of my book. I think I'll get one of our stickers from the collection and decorate it further. I didn't staple it to the cover, you notice. That's so I can always replace it and put in new calendars the next year. Now let's work on the other books. First, I'm going to cut out some of my labels and get those ready. Decide on what order I want them in. And you know I won't be able to leave them undecorated. To make our four books, I'm going to be using this 5x7 composition notebook that I got at Walmart. I'm going to divide it into four equal parts. Some people just eyeball this step, but I'm a little anal, so I always go ahead and divide mine out by counting 10 pages at a time. And now I'm just using my seam ripper and cutting the threads loose from the book and then I'll take my four books and separate them out. This gives you 20 sheets for each book. We actually don't need the fourth one for this project because I will be doing something special for that book. And again, using that long armed stapler, I'm going to put one staple in the middle that way I can always come back and add more paper to each of my books. Or if I don't like something, I can easily take it out. And now I need to decide on the covers for my books. I've picked out these pages. Then I'm going to come back and cut them at seven inches high. 
maybe just a little under, and 10 and a half inches wide. I cut the height first because my paper is directional and I don't want my trees to be upside down. I prefer just to get them all height first and then width. Sort of like an assembly line. Do you use an assembly line when you craft? And of course I'm going to round the corners. Now I'm putting the label on my folder that says receipts because that's where I'll keep all my receipts for my Christmas purchasing. I'm putting the labels that I cut earlier and I mounted on some colored paper on each of these books and putting them in. This one says Christmas parties and events. I think these turned out so cute. And we'll add them in our planner as we go. This one says Christmas menus and recipes. Can't you just see passing that down to your children later? And now I'm getting ready for the last book, Our Christmas Traditions. For this book, I'm not going to be using lined paper. I'm going to be using scrapbook paper that is one-sided. I will cut it at six and three-quarter inches high, again doing all my height first. And then I'll come back and cut the width for my notebooks. I'm cutting them at 10 inches wide. That paper with the writing on it, it has Twas the Night Before Christmas on it. It's much cuter in person. Is Christmas your favorite holiday? And I decided I would use my scraper to burnish the edges to make sure they were folded crisp. Even though this paper is only one-sided paper, it was really thick. This will give us a place to put pictures and memories in, and also some journaling. I'm pretty traditional and red and green is my favorite Christmas colors, although I do have a lot of pink Christmas also. And I'm not going to staple this book at all because I will add as I go. If I need more pages, I'll just put them in. Now we're going to work on the notepad in the back of our book. I just purchased these in a pack of three at the Dollar Tree, separated them out, and now I'm taking about an inch and a half off the bottom. I'm just using my Zacto knife and a metal ruler and I know this is sped up, but it didn't take long at all. You can also use a finger blade on this process. And now I'm trimming up a sheet of paper, this was some of my scraps, that'll cover the front of my notepad. I just soft bended it around and figured out where I wanted it to go. Again, you can score it. And there I was indicating that it was a little long on the back and I wanted to cut it off and mount it down. I used my red line tape on the spine first, up at the top, and now I'm placing some glue on the back and folding it over. This just gives a nice finished product. And that is a great place to make your notes for the season that you don't care about keeping. Let's make some accessories. I'm going to make a tassel charm for the spine. And also we need a charm on the front of our elastic. These are my jewelry pliers. Put on a claw hook. You notice I forgot to do that on the star, but I'll come back and do that. And these pieces are interchangeable. You could take them off, use them on a different book, or you could add to them. If you wanted some beads, you could go in and add that as well. These are some stickers I got at the end of the year at Hobby Lobby. They're kind of like a foil, and I'm going to use those on a large paper clip. Make sure you put it at the top where the single loop is, or you won't be able to use it on your pages. And I have some red foam that I'm going to stick on the back. And I knew that was too big, but I'm just going to fussy cut around it. 
and that'll be one of our little accessories. And now I have a jumbo paper clip, a red poinsettia that I also got at Hobby Lobby. And I went ahead and cut my circle out on this one ahead of time to the correct size. And that'll hold it on nicely. Here's some pockets that I got at Target. I'm going to put one in the front, place in some of my cut aparts, and I'll tuck some extra ones into the folder for now. Let's put on our charms. We'll place our star on the front. And this is our little girl clothespin that I had shown you earlier in the video on my other album. That's one of my leftovers from last year, but they have those again at Hobby Lobby. And putting in our two paper clips, and finally our tassel charm on the spine. I think it's coming together nicely. And now we need to work on our notepad at the back. I'm using one of the longer pockets that I also got at Target in the dollar spot area. And I'm just opening up one of the longer edges. And then for the sides, I'm using my hot glue gun to seal those. And this just gives me a loop to put in the back to hold my notepad. When I put it in my notebook, it was a little big. So I ended up having to trim the side again and just reseal it with some hot glue. Sometimes things are just not exact like you think they're going to be, but you can make it work. Let's take a final look at our Christmas planner. I love putting these together. I love thinking about the people that are going to use them and be so organized at Christmas. I put some stickers, I even found that December sticker. Decorated the books just a little further than what I showed on camera. I don't wanna to put too much in the booklet because I want the person who receives it to be able to put their own personal stamp on it as well. But I do love how that turned out. Thank you guys for joining me today and through this journey of making our Christmas planner. If you have any questions, just leave them below in the comments and I'll be sure to address them for you. And if you make a Christmas planner, be sure and share it with us on our Facebook group called Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We'd love to see it. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our videos with you on YouTube and we also like to meet people and share our crafts at craft shows. Hi guys, it's another Made in Monday with Crafting Cousins. I thought we would do a little paper crafting today. You know how much I love paper crafting. I'm going to take this ordinary $1 notepad this one came from Target. They sell them at the Dollar Tree. They sell them everywhere. We're going to turn this into a cute gift for a friend of mine. So stick around. Let's get out a few supplies and we'll get started. So the first thing, of course, we need is the notepad. We need some chipboard. I'm just using some scraps from my collection. Use whatever you have on hand. We need some elastic for the front closure. This came from the Dollar Tree. We need some double-sided tape. This is 3 8 inch score tape. I got it on Amazon. And some glue, art glitter glue. We're going to need some beautiful paper. This came from Tuesday morning. This has been well used and loved, this pad has. So we'll use a couple sheets from there. And we also need this rivet. It's called a screw knob rivet. I got them on Amazon. I think at a pack of 50, really inexpensive, but that's what we're going to use for our elastic to close our book. So let's get started on this project. First thing we need to do is cut some chipboard. We need to cut two pieces that are seven and seven eighths by four. 
We're going to place it into our cutter and line it up at four. And actually that is right on that. Apparently I cut something at eight inches off of my 12 inch piece. So that's my four inch measurement. And the next measurement needs to be seven and seven eighths. Line it up carefully in your cutter. And you want to slice across a couple of times, take it out, flip it over, because this cutter cannot cut all the way through chipboard. And then we'll slice this side. And that gives us seven and seven eighths by four. And here is my second piece. For the spine, we're also going to be needing a piece of paper, of chipboard, of course. We're going to cut it at half an inch wide by seven and seven eighths inches long. You know what? I think I'm going to cut the seven and seven eighths first. Line it up carefully. Still got to do the same process. Turn it over. And now we need our half inch. Little harder to do this tiny piece of paper, so I'll probably have to adjust and readjust. Turn it over. Same thing. Half inch. Looks like I have two, one for the future use. So that is all the chipboard we need for this particular project. We're going to lay it out like so on some beautiful paper. So for our notepad cover, I've decided that this will be on the outside and I want to capture as much of these roses as possible. So this will be wrapped kind of this way and we'll capture most of our roses there. But of course, we're going to have to leave a margin on this end and this side, and I'll show you what I'm talking about that. I took our chipboard paper and put tape, double-sided tape, on both sides, so that's ready to go. And also for the little spine piece, I have that ready. I'll take those off off camera. Of course, we're going to use some glue in between. I'm going to use our glitter glue in here. And for the inside cover, I think we'll use this floral. I just love it so much. You know how I love pink roses. And this one's very bold, and it's a really cute print, and they coordinate well. So the next thing you want to do is, if you want to be really precise, very precise like I do, I always draw a line very lightly about a half an inch from the bottom. That's about the closest you can go and still have room to fold this up like so, and we're going to cut this off in a minute, but that's not necessary at this point. First thing we want to do is take off the tape, and we want to line this up about a half inch from the bottom, and about a half inch from the side. Then we're going to lay out the spine piece. We're going to leave an eighth of an inch gap so that we can fold it later. You can take something and kind of lay it out so you know you're doing the same distance each time. Or you can just eyeball it. It's not that hard, honestly. So about an eighth of an inch gap. And then we'll have that one. So let me go off camera, take off all this tape, and then we'll place it down on our paper, just like I'm showing you here. About a half inch from the side, half inch from the bottom, all three across, and leave an eighth inch gap in between. Now that the back has been removed from all of the double-sided tape, we want to trim this paper up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to give a good margin. And that's why I'm not using my cutter. I'm just using a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim this off. And I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. See how when that comes around? That's going to be so cute. And we want to trim these corners, of course. Not too much. Leave a good eighth of an inch white right there so we can tuck those corners in when we do this. Just like so. 
I got a little nervous doing that on camera with you. And like that. The first cut's the hardest. After that, it gets a lot easier, I promise. So, now we have our paper that we want to cover. But before we put the other piece on, we've got to fold these ends in. I've already scored this one, so as you notice, it's going to come in quite easily. Like that. Let's do the other end. Just use one of your scoring tools. Not enough that you cut your paper, of course. This particular scrapbook paper is really thick. Very thick. And a lot of times people will put double-sided tape here too. Because my pad is so small, I'm not going to do that. Not this time. And I'm going to fold it in nicely. You don't want to break the paper. Don't, or you don't want it to rip or tear, right? And then at the corners, you want to tuck these corners in so it looks finished. So do all four corners. Just kind of tuck them in. Just gives a nice finished edge. And I've got tape right on this edge, so I'm not going to worry about placing additional glue right now on this. But once I fold this in, I'm going to put new tape on the outside of all of this. So let me show you how to fold it in. It's not hard at all, but you do want to make sure you don't rip your paper. See those ends? They look really nice. Here's the other side. Just kind of gently work it. You don't want to overwork the paper. And there we go. And then for this middle part, And you can wait to remove all of that glue. I just decided to do it at this point. And when I folded my paper, wouldn't have to worry about it. So there's the back. And there's the front. See, we captured as much of the roses as we could. So we didn't go too close to the edge. I think that's quite pretty. Now you have to make some decisions. At least for the back part, before we put the cover on, we have to choose some elastic. I think this pink is about the best color we can use. And we're going to cut a piece of elastic to use to be our clasp. So you're not going to need very much, and we're going to place it in to the back. We're going to put it on like so. And see, it will stretch plenty. And we'll bring it over, and that's where our knob will go, the one I showed you earlier. The little knob will be on top. Wrong end. It'll be like that, and this will come over and close our book. So the next thing we need to do is cut our second sheet of paper to put on this back cover. Inside cover, we want to cut a piece of scrapbook paper at, first of all, seven and five eighths, which is just past the half. By eight and a half. So that's going to be the inside cover. Let me bring it over here and make sure it's going to fit. If I had not already cut the inside, I could lay it out first in there. But that gives you an idea. So this is the inside cover. You can see our elastic sticking out there. And just so you know, I used this glue around the edges because remember there wasn't any tape there because I had folded over the front cover. And then gently you want to press in so it doesn't give way. You want to let that dry some, of course. And there you have it. Next thing we need to do is put on our little knob I told you about. I'm just going to pull this elastic over a little bit and kind of figure out how much I want to stretch it. Maybe right there, and I'll just put a little dot with my pencil. 
And then I'm going to use this Heavy Duty We Are Memory Keepers Hole Punch. And I'm going to look for the 1 8 inch hole. And center it up there as best I can. I can kind of see it through the hole. And then give it a crunch. These things are amazing. They cut through so much, so easily. I have um, psoriatic arthritis, but this is makes it so easy to use. My hands don't scream at all. And then once you do that, you have the little screw part. Stick it through the hole, like so. And then you want to twist this knob down. And there you have it. Put our list in, and I'm going to tell you in just a moment a couple of options for that. And there it closes. And then you can put it in your purse and take it to town with you when you have errands to run and maybe buy groceries. I think that turned out so cute. So it's going inside here. You can do one of two things. You can just use glue or double-sided tape and attach this down. And say, hey, it's a one and done, right? I'm not going to refill it. If you want to refill it, this is what I usually do. I get these adhesive pockets. I usually buy them at Target when they're on sale with the school supplies. And they have different sizes. Uh, normally, I use the smaller ones. But this time, I could only get the really big ones. Looks like they're about $3 a pack. And guys, I honestly can't remember. I think there's about 15 in a pack. And this is the one I have cut off, so it's open on each end. And I'm going to place it in the back of my book to hold my pad. And then I can refill my pad. The first thing I'm going to do is try it out. And I found out that this backing was just a little bit wider than my pad. It was a little bit wider than this pocket, rather. The back of the pad is. And... I kind of like that. I trim this back up just a little bit and I'm going to leave the magnet on. I'm going to peel off this double backing just just like stickers and I'm going to place it carefully down in my book lining it up from top to bottom and now it's in there and now I can refill this when I use all of these. It's going to take me a while because it's pretty thick and there we have it. The clasp is closed. That's the back. And you can put further embellishments on here. You could add some rhinestones. You could add some flowers. But for the person I'm making it for, they wanted it kind of simple to keep it in their purse. So that's how I made it. So got that cute little clasp. Love how that turned out. See how simple that was? And I probably have Oh, $2 in this entire project. And if you bought one at, say, Tuesday morning, they're at least $8. So thank you guys for spending some time with me today for another Made It Monday. Tomorrow is Tutorial Tuesday, and we are involved in a collab that I cannot wait to share with you. On Wednesday, we're going to announce our giveaway. When we reach 750 subscribers, we're going to give away a huge box of crafting supplies also, some products that Trish and I make. So much. You do not want to miss out on that. So that's coming up on Wednesday on Thursday's Trash to Treasure. And you're not going to believe it. Kay is going to be up with Trash to Treasure. And then on Friday, we have a very special video that we're going to do because we're involved in another challenge. So guys, have a great week. And don't forget Saturday, we always have craft chat. Bye, guys. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. So today I thought we would do some paper crafting. I talk about paper crafting to you quite a bit, but I haven't actually done any with you. I thought our first project would be something kind of simple, but decorative and fun. So I thought we would learn to make some rosettes. There are many different ways to and approaches that you can take with rosettes. And I'm going to show you my ideas. You're going to need some scrapbook paper. You want to pick out something cute that's going to be in your rosette. 
you want it to be in my experience from 10 to 12 inches long and then we'll talk about width in just a moment as we start making them if it's less than 10 inches then you want your rosette to be smaller if your rosette's going to be large you may have to piece more than two pieces that will make perfect sense in just a moment but here is some of the pages that i have chosen to work with some of my scraps i didn't want to go in and ruin a whole page this is one that has uh, a character on it but i'm probably not going to use that on camera then i have some solid pages that i'm going to need and that will make perfect sense in a moment and then here are a couple more patterns so i have several different sheets so I have chosen this piece to make my first rosette. I am going to trim my paper to three inches. It's going to go right here along this edge, but it's really not going to matter, and I'll show you why in just a few minutes. So I can still use this scrap of paper. So I'm gonna cut it at three inches, lining it up as best I can, and by the way, this is a Fisker's cutter. It's usually one of my favorites. I think my blade is getting a little dull. So it's cut to three inches. Now what we want to do is take out our scoreboard. This is a scoreboard. I'm sorry if it's hard to see on camera. If you notice, it has ridges in it. This one happens to be made by EK Tools. I got it because it was on sale and it was a nice size. There are many different brands out there. But you want to take your scoreboard, take some kind of scoring tool. This is one kind. This one's made by We Are Memory Keepers, has different size uh, balls on the end, and that determines how deep you go. Also, this one came with it. We'll put that back in its holder. But you want to score it at every half inch. So half, one, one and a half, two, and so on. Careful not to go all the way through the paper. This paper is cardstock and it's thick, but not as thick as a really 110 pound weight. I would say this is more than the 65 pound weight. This fab, uh, excuse me, not fabric. This paper happens to be in the Echo Park collection. You have seen me, if you watch my videos, haul Echo Park quite a bit from Tuesday morning. I love, love, love Echo Park. I love that it's double-sided, so it makes really pretty rosettes. Paper crafts can be pretty time-consuming, which is why I do a lot of it off-camera most of the time and come back. Okay, this page happens to be the full 12-inch width that it comes in. So that's really good. It'll make it easy to work with. Um, we're going to take this now and fold it. You know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and cut it in half. When you make your rosette, I go ahead and cut my paper to the width that I want my rosette to be in the finished product. And then I score my paper. I come over here and cut it in half after the scoring. You can cut it in half before you score it, if you want, but then you've got to score it twice. I like to score it in the larger measurement. That's just a personal preference. If you want to do it the other way, go right ahead. So I'm going to cut this right down the middle. And then I'm going to fold it accordion style. Some people say hills and valleys. Some people say you should start on a hill or you should start on a valley. You know, I don't get too hung up in that because I don't think it really matters. The paper is long enough. If you need to cut off one of these before you piece it together, you can do that. So let me go off camera and I'll finish folding these and I'll come right back. So I'm finishing up my folding on the second one. Still just making constant hills and valleys. Remember I started out with a three inch piece. You have to watch your fold sometime. If you didn't score it perfectly, you have to go back and Make sure you do that in the right spot. 
That can happen sometime. Want to keep it as straight as possible. Okay, we've corrected that. Okay, and there we have two accordion folds. I'm gonna move my cutter. So here are your accordion folds. What you want to do now is connect these pieces together. So you want to take some glue. I like to use this art glitter glue. It's very good glue, dries clear, um, never yellows. It's permanent, it's water-based, it's wonderful glue. I got mine on Amazon and I have not been disappointed. So you can join it like this. Just put these two sides together or you can cut one of them off and you can overlap it. So I'm just going to snip one off with my scissors and then I'm going to connect it this way. You can do it however you want to. Some people put them back to back. You can do that. I just usually prefer to do it this way. I found it doesn't really matter at the end with the overall project. This glue actually doesn't take a whole lot. I probably got way more on here than I need to. It has a little tube that you can put on top and do a real narrow stream. Of course, it stopped up this morning. And you want to hold that for just a second, because like I said, this really is good glue. Dries fast, dries clear. It's the best I have found. And I have tried more than a few. All right, and then you want to come around here. Oh, I didn't show you the back, because it is double-sided. And I'll show you why this label won't matter in just a little bit. So we want to connect these. I think I'm going to cut one of them off again. Oh, hold on. Yep, I'm going to need to cut one off. If you pay attention when you fold it, in the end you don't have to cut it off. It'll match perfectly on how you end. But like I said, I don't get too concerned about that. It made me more crazy trying to remember which way to go than cutting one off. Okay. So we're going to connect that. Hold it just a second. And now it's in a circle. Make sure your circle is all going the right way. Now because I want this label to be in the center so I can cover it up easily. I'm going to make sure it's on top. And this is, can be a little tricky, and especially if you're doing it on camera, you usually mess up. <laughs> but I have my hot glue gun over here. I'm gonna pull it out. It's easier to do with hot glue because hot glue will dry a lot more quickly. So we'll try that. All right, you want to kind of fold it inward and bring it together in a circle. Sometimes it helps if you do this with a plate under it. I just put a piece of plastic and you want to hold it in one circle and then give it some time to set. This is a time to adjust it while it's still a little wet. I hope you can see that between my fingers. The glue's not real dry yet. It's still a little sticky, a little tacky. But that's how we get our rosette. Let's turn it over, put some on this side. I'm going to go ahead and keep forming it. I'm going to move it around so that it doesn't stick to my plastic there. Isn't that cute already? I like having that pattern on the back. Pretty one on the front. Okay. Let's let that sit just a second. And we want to talk about what to do for the middle. Told you earlier I had some scraps. And I also have some punches. I have a two inch punch. It's a scallop circle, and I have a one and a half inch scallop circle punch. They're just two different styles, two different brands. I typically buy what I like and don't pay attention to the brands. I just get what I need for my projects. 
We'll try this two inch one first, but I think it's going to be too big. Since it's a narrow strip, I like to look on the back and see that I am on the area I need to be in. I could use that, but it's a little big. Let's try this one. Sorry about the noise. Yeah, I like that. I think that's better. So to hide all of the centers, we'll probably need two of these. And I could do a different color. I could use this pink on one side. You know what? Let's try that for the back. Doesn't have to be the same because it's two-sided. I'm still going to use my hot glue for this type this part of the project. My glue gun is slow today like me. And then you want to make that as much in the center as you can. Make it look cute. Let me move this so you can see it better. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to turn over to the back and add this pink one on this other pink. And you can put the glue out a little further because it's a one and a half inch circle. Get that in the center as much as we can. And then one thing I like to do is come back and decorate the center a little more. I have some stickers, some that I use for different projects. Most of them came from this same collection, Echo Park. This actually is the sticker collection that came with that paper. And let's see if we have something we might want to put in the center. These will go on my uh, little planners. And this is a cute decorative touch that will be on the outside. It can be used as a page marker. So it's from the Fashionista collection. We have lots of cute circles down at the bottom say glam girl so she shopaholic i like the shopaholic i think that would be cute and i like the perfume in the handbags i always like the roses but why don't we do shopaholic and we'll line it up right in the center as best we can and then on the back we can add one too if we want to what do you think looks good on the back? I think we'll just go for this, uh, this heart right here would look good. But well, we have to make sure we line it up just right. That looks cute. And you can decorate it however you like. You can put lace, you can put some eyelash trim. I'm just making them pretty simple today for the video. And then the next thing you want to do is give it a, a stick handle, right? I have many different kinds. You can use these paper straws. You can use the lollipop sticks. You have lots of options. I buy these when I see them really cheap at the Dollar Tree or the Target Dollar Spot. I got lots of pink ones. Um, for this particular project, this looks good. But I think this actually looks the best, and maybe we'll use this black. All right. So this is our front. I'm going to make sure it's lined up with it. I'm going to put a little glue in here and slide my stick in. And you can see how that's starting to come together. Don't do what I did. I just tripped some glue in there. Usually I wear finger covers. When I'm working with hot glue, I just forgot today. These aren't even the ones that you buy for that. These are the ones you buy in the beauty section at the Dollar Tree to take off nail polish or either artificial nails. After this glue dries, we'll clean this up a little bit. And But you can see how cute that is. That's the front. That's the back. But I want to dress it up just a little bit more. And I'll have some ribbon here. I looked at this, but I don't really like that. Hold on just a sec. Okay, I went back and looked in my stash and found some narrow ribbon and some thick ribbon. 
and one's in kind of the mint green color and one in the black and I want to tie these in the center doesn't have to be perfect they're not exactly the same size they can always be trimmed you can burn the edges to keep them from unraveling I'll go back and do that off camera and there we have it a rosette I can embellish it further and put some rhinestones I'm not real happy about where I spilled the glue there I will clean that up but there you have it, a simple rosette. Hold on just a moment and I'll come back with another one. Okay, I have the last rosette I'm going to show you. I just used the same procedure, but this one is a four inch rosette. Because it's a four inch rosette, you may notice that the pleats are not as close together. What you want to do in that case, and I could have done, is add a third piece. So you have a lot more that you're folding up and you're folding in. I decided that I liked the open look a little more, so I just left it. This particular rosette I'm not going to use on a straw or a lollipop stick because I'm going to use it as a decoration on the actual cover of one of my books. So on the back, this paper is very thick. It's probably 110 pound. And it's as you notice, this part's not completely straight. Doesn't really matter because like I said, I'm going to use this to glue it down to my book. So this is just the back side, not a double-sided paper. And this is the front, has some cute hearts, and I thought I would use some of these stickers to embellish the front of it. They're a little dimensional. They came from the Dollar Tree, I believe, back around um, Valentine's Day. So I have a little sticker here. Going to put that right on there. I think that looks really cute. So that's just another way of using your rosettes. You can see the difference in the size, the three inch rosette and the four inch rosette. This paper is very thick, but this one's even thicker. And so it's just a look, a different way of using them. I'm sure you can come up with hundreds of ways. At Crafting Cousins, you always find a variety of crafts on our channel. Trish specializes in wood and I specialize in paper, but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, Kay specializes in wreaths and making pretty bows. There's a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. For today's project, we're going to be making a prayer journal. I've had a couple of requests and people said, hey, how do you make your prayer journals? Well, let's make one together. We'll start this today and then next Tuesday we'll finish it up. I'm going to use, first of all, some 12 by 12 paper. This paper is double-sided. That's the kind you're going to need. You can use whatever pattern you want. This came from Tuesday morning. It's retailed at $14.99 and their price is $5.99. But the yellow sticker means I got 20% off. So this was a really good deal. This paper is called Life is Good. And I thought this would be perfect for our prayer journal. It comes with some cut aparts and so forth. We'll look at all that in just a moment. It says it doesn't get any better than this. And I was like, hey, that's exactly what we need for a prayer journal. We're going to need some glue, of course. You know when I paper craft, I always end up using some art glitter glue. It dries clear. It has a great hold they have all kinds if you look on amazon i don't get any kickbacks for that but that is the best place i have found it was amazon we always need some tape this tape came from amazon as well this happens to be three eighths inch tear tape you need a small notebook that is five by seven this one came from the dollar tree some unlined paper because we're going to make one of the notebooks from scratch and i'm going to have a free download for that if you're interested a hole punch of some sort. I have uh, simple ones and I also have, the, have this complex one from We Are Memory Keepers, which is wonderful. You, of course, need a paper cutter. You can't really paper craft too much without a paper cutter. You can draw it out with your um, pencil and cut it with scissors, but it's a lot easier if you have a precision paper cutter. You're also going to need, finally, a scoring board and some kind of scoring tool called a stylus. This is the one that happens to come with the EK tools, but there are several on the market. So that's some basic supplies to get us started. So I went through the paper pad, this one that I showed you, Life is Good, and I have chosen the pages we're going to use. 
the back of this, I love this paper, is going to be the front of our prayer journal. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll only need seven and a quarter inches this way and the full 12 inches across. Show you that in a moment. So don't worry about anything that looks like it's not going to um, be appealing to our prayer journal because we'll cover that up with other items the little bit that shows. We're going to use this sheet as a pocket folder. We'll laminate that just like we'll laminate the cover. Here are some stickers that came with the collection. We'll use those throughout as needed. Here are some cut-aparts. We may use some of those in our prayer journal. They'll make good page markers and just cute de decorations and embellishments as well. This particular sheet and this one are going to be the covers of the notebooks we're going to put into our prayer journal. So that's the paper that I have decided that we're going to use. Let's begin constructing the cover for our album. We're going to use this page and it says today is a gift, so we want to make sure our words are running the right way. When you have a directional paper, you have to watch that when you cut it. We're going to need the full 12 inch width, and then we're going to need it to be seven and a quarter inches high. When I looked at my paper, I found out that it would split this particular band right here, and I thought it would be better to take some off of both ends. So I'm going to put it in my cutter and cut it right between the green and the gold band there. Let me line it up as perfectly as I can. And so I am going to cut it twice because I just think that's going to be more appealing to the front. So now we want to make sure we take this end off and we're going to line it up at seven and a quarter. And guys, I apologize if I got my head in the way. That happens sometimes. And so just a little bit's going to come off, and I think that's going to be a beautiful front for the journal. So now let's work on the front cover. We have it cut out. This is the front. Flip it to the back, making sure the top is at the top, and place it into your scoreboard. Because if you put it upside down and score it the wrong way, then your whole journal will be upside down. It's very important because these measurements are going to be different from the side, right? The first measurement is five and one eighth. And you'll score that. The next one is five and three eighths, right before the half, and score that. And then at five and five eighths, and score that. Remember, you don't want to push so hard that you cut all the way through your paper. And after that, we want to do 10 and 3 fourths. And finally, 11 and a quarter. So 5 and an eighth, 5 and 3 eighths, 5 and 5 eighths, 10 and 3 fourths, and 11 and a quarter. And then take it out of your scoreboard. You want to fold where the three lines are together, the first one and the third one. And that makes your front. And then fold on that 10 and 3 quarter one and 11 and a quarter. And that gives a little flap for the side of our journal. We'll put elastic in, of course, and all of our goodies will stay in our prayer journal. So I think that's going to be a beautiful journal. In a moment, I'm going to put this into a laminating machine. I'll show you my laminating pockets and we'll do that. But first, we have to construct a little pocket from the front. And I'm thinking that we'll just do a little diagonal pocket for the inside front cover there. And then on the back, maybe we'll do a little different design. Let's cut these out. First fold in our journal is at five and a quarter. I'm going to take this scrap piece I cut off and I'm going to cut it at five inches in the width. I just left the height that was left there, which by the way is like four and a half. So let's cut five inches off. And the next thing I'm going to do is take my ruler and I'm going to measure across to two inches and put a small dot from the, this is the top part of it. And put a dot and then the same thing on the side, I'm going to measure two inches 
and put a dot. So let's put it in our cutter and just kind of line it up on the cutting line. Each dot, I'm going to do a diagonal cut. Sometimes hard to see, and it doesn't have to be exact. You can play with it a little bit. You can always come back and trim it. So that's going to be for the inside. I'll put a dab of glue on there, on this side and this side. So I have three spots I'm going to put glue. Down this edge, down this edge, and the smaller edge. And that will create an inside pocket. When we laminate it, it will make it much sturdier. So we'll have it there. I'm going to hold off on the back pocket just yet, and I think I can do it without it, and we'll use maybe a clear pocket there. So that's what we have so far for the cover. So let's put some glue on those edges. This glue is really good. You don't have to go crazy. I'll probably wipe some of mine off. When you first start, it can get a little messy. So we're just going to put a little. I'm going to wipe some of that off. You don't have to do that, but it bothers me if it's not pretty even. And then we'll put it down carefully, lining up the corners with our book. That looks pretty straight. And we'll give that a minute to dry. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and construct our pocket folder. We want our pocket folder to be 10 and a half inches wide. So I'm going to cut that measurement first, lining it up as carefully as I can. We'll cut that at 10 and a half. And then for the height, we want to cut that at 10. So we'll turn it and cut it at 10. And you can save these scraps, guys. They make good book markers. Once you laminate them, you can put some ribbon in. You can put some stickers on before you do that. But these make great book markers for journals. So there we have the beginnings of our pocket folder. Now I have our page in our scoring board. What we want to do now is turn it on the 10 and a half inch side, which I have done. And we want to score it at half an inch, first of all. Then score it at five and a quarter. And again, at ten and a quarter. So one quarter, which I think I said half, guys, and I'm sorry about that. So one quarter, five and a quarter, and ten and a quarter. Then you want to turn it, and now you have to make sure you've got your paper lined up like you want it, and we're going to score it as seven. We'll score it at seven. And now we're going to fold it in half and burnish it. Don't you love how those tools just roll around? Want to fold in that quarter inch, not half inch, quarter inch. And on the other side, a quarter of an inch. Just like that. And then come to the bottom and fold that seven inches. See how that's coming together as a folder? That's going to be cute. And then what I do is I take my folder kind of upside down. And you can see your center fold and you can see your seven inch line. And then I just take some scissors and cut at an angle. I start from the inside and cut to the outside. I don't measure it. I just take a little hunk out. And then when you open it up, 
this is what you're going to have. It's starting to come together as a pocket folder. Isn't that cute? You put all kinds of things in there. You could put some of your church bulletins. You could put coupons that you run into the store. All kinds of things. But you want to come in before we glue it down. And we want to take out, we'll cut just over the fold line and take out this little slip and then at an angle like that. Can you see that? I'm going to do it to the other side too. Cut just to the inside of the fold line. This just makes it lay down better when you go to put the whole thing together. And then out to an angle. And so we can fold that up easily and this will come over and cover it. And the same thing on this side. So I'm going to get the glue and glue that down. And this will take some time to dry. And after it dries, of course, we're going to laminate the cover and this pocket folder. That will be the only things we laminate. Well, we might do a few bookmarks when we get to embellishing this prayer journal. But for the actual prayer journal itself, that will be it. So I'm going to put a little glue here. I don't know why my glue is coming out so fast and rapidly today. Probably because I don't want it to, right? Before we laminate our folder, and I have the laminator heating up, so if you hear a clicking noise or a tapping noise, it's actually my laminator. I don't know why that thing makes so much noise. I'm going to use this Crocodile Corner Chomper on the half inch side. This thing is amazing, just like everything we are Memory Keepers makes. I'm going to go around and round these corners. You do not have to do this. It is quite fine not to do it. It just adds another dimension or another decorative touch. And I just thought, hey, let's do that. And then when you close it, you also want to do these two corners. And that makes it fit in your book a whole lot easier. So again, the half inch side, lining it up, take a little chomp, and our final chomp. So that gives you a notched edge here. Let me lay it on the mat. So it gives you a notched edge so it can go in your book easily because it's going to be on some elastic. And hopefully we'll get to that today and we'll put that together. So I'm going to put it in my pocket. Let me show you that. This is just a laminating pocket. I think these are by Fellows, but they sell all kinds. I got mine at Staples because I got it on sale. And we'll laminate this really well. I'll run it through there about twice. And then we'll trim it out with an eighth of an inch edging all the way around. Don't forget to do that. And then I'll be back with that one. For our cover, well, we have a little more of an issue laminating it. Because I made it the kind of journal that's going to wrap around and it's 12 inches, this pocket only goes to 11 inches, right? So we're going to take two pockets and basically laminate it in two pieces. We're going to put one piece and go just a little over that center mark and then we'll take an additional one and come in and do the same thing. And just overlap it a little bit. And what that does is it gives us a really thick, nice spine and our elastics don't come out as much. But I don't want to waste all this excess edging on each end that would go to waste. So either I'll put a bookmark in there or what you can also do is cut this off. It's what I'm actually going to do at the beginning of this project. I'm going to cut one of these sheets to five and a half inches and one at seven inches. So I'm just going to put it in my cutter, just like you see me do so many times, making sure I'm cutting it at the right area. You wanna make sure the closed end is towards this way. So I'm cutting one at seven inches, just like that. And save this, you can use it again. And then the next one, put it in the cutter again, making sure the closed edge is to the left. 
and cut it at five and a half. And you want to be as precise as you can, but honestly, if it's a little off or a little more, either way, it's not going to matter. And there we have that one cut. So this is my laminator. It's just my staples. They have all kinds. And this one I've had a really long time, so I'm not going to rela replace it until it just gives out. This is my folder placed into the pocket. Going to line it up carefully between the little lines they have on my laminator and let it run through. The next thing we need to run through the laminator is our cover. I lined up the seven inch piece so that it's just a little over that middle score line. This is the longest one, the seven inch side. And you want to run this first piece through by itself and then we'll add the second one. And now that we've run that through one time, we want to take our five inch piece, and place it as carefully as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect on the sides because you're going to cut that off anyway. You just want to make sure they overlap in the middle, which I have done. And now I'm going to place it in my laminator. I'm just going to hold that up. I ran the pocket through the laminator twice. The next thing I want to do very carefully is take my Zacto knife and cut out. And there's a little bit of an air pocket, by the way, there, so it's not as hard as it seems. You don't want to cut all the way through your paper, but you just want to cut through this laminating there and there. So you want to cut here, 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 and here to open up the folder so you can put your papers in. I use my ruler. I have a little metal one here, and I'll show you one of the cuts, and then I'll do the rest off camera. And you just want to press hard enough to cut the laminating. You don't want to cut all the way through to your paper. And then cut the top as well. I'm sorry that I took that off camera. I have to kind of choose between my big head showing or getting it where you can see it in the middle. So see how that is? And then let me open this one up. Oh, guys, you have to cut it more than once sometime. I would rather cut it more than once and be cautious and not have it too deep of a cut. Let's see how we're doing. There we go. You see, we have a pocket we can put papers in. Like that. So that'd be great. I'm going to go off camera and cut the other side, and then trim it, and I'm going to leave at least an eighth of an inch all the way around. Why? Because sometimes if you cut into that air pocket that's there, because this is a thick paper, it will lift up and it may peel off of your folder. So you want to leave that air gap cut just outside the air gap. Let me go off, cut that out, and I'll be right back. And I'm also going to, once I cut these out, and the whole thing out, I'm going to run it through the laminator one more time just to make sure it's sealed. So here's the front of our prayer journal so far. We'll probably put some Velcro, maybe just a Velcro dot under there to keep it closed. We'll have some elastic. We'll put elastic in when we meet again. Uh, three holes across here and three holes across the bottom. And that will help hold everything in. Our folder will be one of those things that we'll hold in. It's all laminated, nice and crisp and ready to go. And next time we'll do our notebooks also. And we'll do a little bit of embellishing because, you know, we can't leave it plain. And maybe we'll make a few items to go with it. So today we're going to start part two of this prayer journal we've been constructing. It's basically a five by seven. The cover, of course, is just a little larger than that. 
First thing we're going to do today is put in our holes to string our elastic in. You can see I've already put in the bottom three. We're going to mimic that up here at the top. And then we'll need one hole right in the middle to do our elastic clasp that goes around our journal to close it. I'm going to use a couple of tools. I have this We Are Memory Keepers. I believe it's called a Big Bite, guys. It has one eighth of an inch hole on this side and then it has three sixteenths on this side, so that's a much larger hole. We're going to use the one eighth inch, of course, and that will make our holes at the end. This tool was about $30, but I'm sure I used a coupon. It has been invaluable. At first, I just used a cheap hole punch that did a one eighth inch hole that I got at Hobby Lobby for about $1.97. But finally, if you make enough of these projects, you figure out, hmm, maybe I need to go ahead and invest in a good tool. Speaking of a good tool that costs a lot of money, that's this big bite, also by Crocodile, and also by We Are Memory Keepers. This thing is amazing. It is not cheap, and it took me quite a while to convince myself that I made enough journals and um, books that it was going to be worth investing in this tool, but I finally did, and I'm so glad I did. If you're going to be making a lot, you need one of these. If you're not, if you're only going to make a few journals or occasionally make one, you may want to just use this simple tool from Cricut because you can use it for so many projects, and this can be your middle hole punch. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for the end. I would at least get one of those $2 one eighth inch hole punches at any craft store, but for the middle, would be perfect. So let's make those three holes. We're going to use, of course, the 1 8 inch side, and we're going to come in just a little past the plastic and on into the paper, about an eighth of an inch, so lots of 1 8 right? 1 8 in to the paper. I'm going to turn it around on the front side, actually, and because I can see the folds better, because we're going to cut excuse me, punch our holes right on those folds that we made. And then remember the one in the middle that we didn't fold on, but we did score? That's our middle hole. So we put it up under there. And I can kind of see as I move onto the paper because there's a hole at the top there. I just want to make double sure I've got it in. And that's one hole. It's about an eighth of an inch in. There's our second fold. I want them to be as even as possible, but if you goof a little bit, honestly, it's not going to matter. And then now I'm going to put in that middle hole, and that's how we do the holes on the end. Those look pretty good. That one's not exactly perfect, but I don't think you'll even be able to tell when I string the elastic. And now to make the middle hole, we have to use the big bite. For this Big Bite, it has a sliding mechanism on the top. I hope this shows on camera. If you're setting like a brad or um, some kind of paper it reinforcer, you set it on the first one, and then it moves down to one eighth, which is what we're going to use, and you can come on back for the three sixteenths. So a very versatile tool and heavy duty, guys. So put it on the one eighth, and I'm going to show you if I can on camera. When I push down, it goes in right there. If it was the larger one, it would go in further down. It also has a sliding mechanism, so you can be sure to get your hole exactly where you want it. I'm not necessarily going to be using that on this project because I measured my paper, and I found out the middle is right below where that brown line ends. Very convenient, right? So I just found the center, and I'm going to put it in my big bite and very carefully make sure I can get it as close to the center as possible. This is the tedious process because when you're doing it on camera, you're afraid you'll mess up. Once it's in, it's in. And actually, that's pretty perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is string the elastic. Speaking of elastic, I'm using this pink elastic it came from Amazon, it says Mandela Crafts, and it works really well. 
I ordered it quite some time ago and I have used, oh my goodness, <laughs> I've used a lot of it off of here. It's two millimeter, that's what you want, and there's 70 meters on this roll. And I use a lot of pink. I know that shocked you if you've been watching my videos for some time, but the pink is going to look really good with this book. I have several colors, but this pink looks great, so I'm going to use it. So that's the elastic we're going to use. We're going to cut off about 34 inches. How did I figure that out? Well, I know that I need to wrap this approximately four times when I finish, meaning I will have four strands inside my book that I can add things into, add my booklets, add my folder, and so forth. So I know it takes about four loops around, and I am just add a little extra to tie it off. So that's how I got that measurement. The first thing you want to do with this elastic, it helps if you kind of burn the edges a little bit. So I just have this cheap lighter I got from the Dollar Tree. And just keeps it a little stiffer and makes it easier to work with. You want to go in the middle hole first. This one. And I'm starting at the top. Top middle hole. And you want to leave this, oh, about an inch and a half below your middle hole that you made. That's just a good rule of thumb. Don't let that come out. And then on the back side, we're going to come across. All of the strands will be across in the back, so you don't get confused. There will be no up and down vertical ones, right? They'll all be horizontal in the back, and they'll be vertical on the inside. So pull that, not too tight. You do want to keep your elastic taut, but you don't want it too tight or it will bow your laminated cover. So straight below at the bottom, straight down, and then go to the back and again, make a horizontal insert. And pull it taut, straight across. See guys at the back? Straight across. Inside, vertical. And I know I flipped it, it really doesn't matter. Just that I start in the right spot. And then we'll go back into this hole we've already been in. So you might wanna pull it to the side a little bit. Play with it till you get it, but you don't want to make these holes any larger with a larger hole punch. Pro I promise you. And see, it's still kind of tight, but it's also not extremely tight. It's kind of loose, looser than you probably think. And back in the back again, let me show that to you. I apologize if I put my thumb in the way. It is difficult to see, and I know this takes some time on video, but if you're going to make journals, you know you need to know how to string them properly. So I'm straight across, and again, straight across from that same hole down. Like that. And we're getting a little tight, so maybe I do need to tighten these up. Just a little. There we go. And straight across in the back again. If it's hard to get it in, you'll just have to pull that elastic and play with it. And you can also use a pokey tool if it doesn't go in right away. There we go. Because when you start putting multiple strands on there, sometimes it is a problem. And now you see we have three across here. For the fourth strand, what we do is take these two and tie them off. That's all you do. See, I ended up with lots of string left. So you can adjust it and get it where you want it. It's not too snug, I don't think. So you can tell it doesn't bow it. But we want to take and make, oh, probably two good knots here. This is a good time to adjust it before you do that. Don't pull it too snug though, again, not too snug. And I just pull mine out like that. You wanna clip them off. And I'll burn the edges again. So there we have our four strands. Next thing we're going to do 
is put in this middle one. For the middle closure, I just kind of wrap mine around this book, making sure I leave that lip there. Because I want it a little snug, because I do want it to keep the book closed, right? So I'm going to cut off about that much. All right. I don't really measure it. I just make sure I have enough. I try not to waste a lot. I probably waste more when I'm on camera than I do when I do the real thing. And you can do this a couple of ways. The easiest way probably is to fold it in half, find that center, get your pokey tool if you can't get it in there first, and make sure you, you move these aside and push it through the hole. I think I can pull this one through without it. No, maybe not. And then pull it through and you want to kind of get it where you think it's going to go and then make sure that's not tight enough so i'm going to pull it out a little more tie a knot i'm not going to tie it too snug at first because then i could adjust it if i mess up so there's my big knot got it that way pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it there until I put my notebooks in because the notebooks can make all the difference in the world. And we can always come back and adjust that knot. We can make it shorter or longer until I get it into a really tight knot. And then you won't be able to adjust it as much. But that's how we string our elastic. I think this is coming together quite well. The next thing we're going to do for the front before we leave this is we're going to make a little charm to go on the front. This is a little cross and it has a little pearl. Let's see if I can hold it up closer for you. It's difficult to see, I'm sure. But I think that goes along with our prayer journal well. It's a white pearlescent bead and then we have a cute little filigree cross. So I'm going to get a lobster clasp and a small jewelry loop and we'll get that on there. So remember this Dollar Tree book I showed you that's five by seven? When you open it up, if you pull back, you notice that they let the glue come to the front a little bit on the front and the back. And so we want to cover that up. And to do that, I just remove this cover. It's kind of a faux leather feel. It is a nice cover, but it really doesn't match the aesthetics of what we're doing. So I measured it and we're going to repeat this on our paper and then we'll just do a little scoring and bend around it. Six and seven eighths for our height and 10 inches for the width. And remember the papers I showed you, this is what we're going to use on the front. And this is one of the cut aparts. I thought we would put it on this little piece of scrap paper I have. You don't want a huge border around it, but a little pink border would set off that pink flower nicely, I think. I guess it goes like that. Because my intention for this journal inside our prayer journal would be that you would write scripture, daily scriptures. There's lots of sites where you write a scripture every day. It helps you meditate on it and uh, remember it. If you're like me, writing things down helps you remember. So I was thinking this, you could write on here um, scriptures or daily scripture or something. And this would be a nice little title for the book. But it didn't look so good on just that busy paper so we need a little bit of an edge and i went and just pulled that from my stash and do you remember the stickers that i showed you from this collection we may use some of those in our book too either on the inside or the outside this pro this process well it's a process as you go through you decide to delete and add and some things you thought you would use you don't use so that's what we're going to do next we're going to cut out this paper and it is a little bit directional so we have to be careful to get our 10 inch width <clears throat> excuse me because it has numbers here on the back i'm not really sure the purpose of those numbers but you will see them that's why you want a double-sided piece of paper right it won't be this ugly white on the inside you'll have this on the outside and that on the inside can you see the numbers interesting huh 
All right, so we're going to cut the paper out at a 10 inch width. We'll cut that first. Get as exact as you can. Line it up. And you can see if you're looking down at your cutter, this one has a wire and it goes right in the middle of that set of numbers and I know that mine is straight. And again, hold on to that. There are lots of uses for that. So we got our 10 inch width. Now we want to turn it and cut our height and it really doesn't matter too much which way we go. I think we'll turn it where the numbers are this way. Six and seven eighths. Cut it as carefully as you can. There we go. Always come back and trim it if we need to. And that's our cut. There's our paper. And I'm going to round these corners. I'm going to use the smaller end of the corner chomper I showed you on the first video because this book only has slightly rounded corners. So I'm going to put in that little quarter inch, quarter inch, and do that all the way around. And of course, this is another We Are Memory Keepers tool. I keep those people in business. Do you keep them in business? How many tools do you own from We Are Memory Keepers? Comment down below and let me know. All right, so we have that, and now we need to wrap it around our book. So I have it like this. I'm just going to carefully lay it out and see how this looks. Because they don't give a lot of slack in this one. And I'm just going to do a soft bend. Check the back. Because so I don't want to put that glue on until I'm ready. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to put some glue here on this corner. I'm just going to be using this art glitter glue that you see me use all the time. Put my glue on. And I'm just going to burnish this spine a little bit. Takes just a few seconds to dry. Art glitter glue is pretty fast. Gives you a little time to play with it, but after that it is set. So let's give that some time to finish gluing and then we'll move on to decorating the front. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe by clicking the red subscribe below. And then when the bell comes up, if you'll ring that bell, YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content based on the options you choose. So the next thing we want to do is decorate the front of that book. So I have the little cut apart I showed you that we can write on and decide what our journal is going to be used for. I put some double-sided tape on the back I showed you in the first video. It's 3 8 inch tear tape. I got it off of Amazon. And this stuff is amazing. It sticks well. It tears easily if you have a little sharp um, object to put against it, like a ruler or um, some kind of block. It works great. I'll show you that in a later video. But it has lasted me a long time. So this nice roll has a lot on it when you get it, because I've had it a while. So we're going to use that. We're going to use our pokey tool to get the backing up. And then, of course, we're going to put some of that art glitter glue in between. Just wanted to show you that procedure one more time. What did I tell y'all about this glue? When I want it to come out, it doesn't want to. And when I want it to work carefully, then it just comes out in a clump. It had a nice little tip on it. I'm not sure how I messed that up. Go figure. I use it quite a bit and it won't be long and I'll have to purchase a new one anyway. So we'll take this, put it down on the pink. Again, not too much of an edge, if that makes sense. 
let that sit a little bit and then I'll trim that up on my trimmer so I have the same amount all the way around and that's going on the front of our book. So there we have the front of our notebook. I haven't put a lot on it yet, but I put the little label that I showed you and I have a little sticker down here at the bottom that says happy and some flowers. As I decorate the second notebook, then maybe we'll add even more to this one. And there's the inside. And the good news is you can take this cover off after you use it completely up and you could just stick it on another book and start again and put it inside your prayer journal. Let's put it in and see what it looks like. So let's see if we can get it in here and we will put this one in as well. I like to put my folder in the second elastic you can do it however you want to, and I do need to trim that off where I tied my second knot. I'm just going to take these two middle ones for now and put both of them inside my folder because, oh yeah, that's so cute. Because that I'm not going to have four items in here, I'm going to have three. But if you have something thin and you want to... Um, Put another one in. You can just take that out. And there we have our first notebook. I love how this is coming together. And of course, there's our class. We have a cross and the pearl. And then on the side, we've added a tassel with another little charm that's a key. And that's what we have so far. This is a clear pocket that sticky bag that I got at Target. They have them every summer when they put out the school supplies up in the dollar spot area. You get about 15 pockets to 20 for three dollars and then close to school time they'll usually put them 50% off. Every time I find some during the summer I buy quite a few. I'm going to put this in the back. It's going to be hard for you to see but I'm going to put it in our back here and then I'll have some of the cut aparts in there and the person who gets this journal can do what they want to with it. But that's what I'm going to do. So that gives us another top pocket. I'm just going to line it up a little bit from the bottom. Maybe an eighth of an inch. And smooth that down. And then they can put some things there. Later you'll see me put some cut aparts in there. To send home with the person who gets this journal. So I just kind of centered that in the middle of my page. Let's make a few embellishments. I have my hot glue gun over here. This one I found in my stash and it's already embellished with some little pink stones. So that will go in the journal to mark pages. Just a little clothes pin. And then I have a large paper clip, not the jumbo size. Jumbo size is about that big. And of course the regular size is a little smaller than this one. And I thought we would take this, put a drop of glue, put our clip down, making sure that the end is down with the two loops because that's how we'll put it on our paper. So we'll put that down, put this one on top, and then add a little rhinestone. I just took some little flowers that I had from my stash I had gotten at Hobby Lobby when they were on sale. I just sandwiched them between there, put a little rhinestone on top that I had. And then on the back, I have a little piece of felt. This, um, I'm sorry, foam. And I just cut it in a circle. It happened to be a sticky back one. So I didn't even have to glue that part. But I did glue all of these things onto it. So I think that is a cute page marker. And I'm going to put it on the front here again so you can see it. So I like how this is coming together so far. Next thing we need to do is notebook two. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos five days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you will find something you like here at Crafting Cousins. Now we need to make our second book to go in our journal. First thing we're going to do is make the cover. I need to cut this paper and it is non-directional so it doesn't matter where I start. We're going to cut the width at 10. So that's the width of our paper. 
flip it around and cut the top at six and seven eighths. Six and seven eighths. And then you can come in here and use your scoreboard and score it to fold it, but I'm just going to fold it in half. And this is going to be the cover for our booklet. I want to use my corner rounder on the small edge, which is the one quarter. Chomp these corners. You do not have to do that. Sometimes I choose not to. I just thought it added a little bit to this one. And the next thing we have to do is make the pages to go inside. You can use plain notebook paper. You can use whatever you want. I went to my computer and I made this sheet. I just Googled free pray word, honestly, and put this to go in our bottom corner. And then I put a scripture on this side, pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. So I have those on there. Then I'm going to cut this paper to size. The first thing I did was just take off and leave me a little margin here at the bottom. I didn't measure at this point. Just put it in my cutter and get it as close as I want down there. And then I do the same thing on this side that says pray. And I did run these on both sides, the ones I used in my book. I'll show you that in a moment. When I get it to this point, I know that I want this dimension, which is my height here at the bottom. That'll be the height of the book. I want it to be six and three-fourths inches. About to cut it on the wrong side. Um, six and three-fourths inches. So that gives me my height. And that should be just about right. If I have to, I'll take some off each end. And since I need it to be nine and three quarters wide, this is one I printed at first and I just wanted to show you on camera. But the ones I actually did for the booklet, I moved my scripture over so that it would be perfectly placed. And now I have my little booklet. I have about 14 sheets here, which gives you 48 sheets for your little prayer journal. The way I'm going to put mine together, I folded them in half after I got those measurements and rounded the corners. I'm going to put a staple right in the middle. This is a really long swing line stapler. I purchased it after I'd made several notebooks without it. You do not have to do that. You can actually open up a staple, poke it in, and then press it down on the back with something hard. You can do that. Enter so I can refill it. I can add pages. I can do whatever I like in my journal. And then the cover we made earlier, well, I just put that around it. Then let's bring over our whole product. Pull the elastic out. Place that in the center. And now we have our final reveal. Have our prayer journal, laminated, heavy duty. We have this cute little charm on the front and it does have a lobster clasp so you can move it around to a different journal. We have a little lobster clasp on the side. We have a tassel and a little key because prayer is the key to a Christian's everyday life. Take off the holder, open it up. Got the pocket there. Have our first notebook. It's all decorated. And I was thinking you would put scripture journal here but the person who wins this can put whatever they like and so there's our first book there's our laminated folder with pockets and then finally the book we just made which is for a prayer journal I love how this turned out so much and I'm sending several cards with it so the person can make note cards or do whatever they would like I also have the little clothespin decorated to mark pages and the cute little flower that we made that is a paper clip. We hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursdays, and guys, of course, on Saturday, we always have craft chat. See you tomorrow!